Hey, St. John the Baptist, this is Frater Theophane here. Um, I've got two of my brothers with me today. This is Frater Garion and this is Frater Philip. Uh, Frater Garion is from Texas and he works with our older fathers. And Frater Philip um, is from California and he works in the kitchen with me. Um, and as I told some of you last week, we just moved, all of us Norbertines just moved to this big new abbey. So I want to show you around the abbey a little bit. Um, so take a look. We've got the big and then we've got uh, the area where we live. There's the bell tower there. There's the area where we live over on this side. So I'm just going to take you to a couple of these locations and explain what's going on with them. Hey again, St. John the Baptist. It's Frederick Gary on here. Um, I'm glad you joined me in our Abbey Bell Tower. This bell tower is 100 feet tall. 100 feet tall with four massive bells inside. We use these bells, um, as you can see I'm holding this big rope uh, to ring them. We use these bells to tell us when the Divine Office is about to start, when Holy Mass is about to start, also when we're about to say the Angelus. So it really, they kind of mark each of the most important parts of our day. Um, and when, when it's a really important day, we ring them all at once um, to show the, the jubilation and the joy that we have at this, at this moment. Um, so Fratifin, you want to join me in, in showing them off? Yeah. Pull your ears because it's going to get a little loud. Yeah, you might want to lower the volume on your computer right now if you're watching on a computer. It's going to get really loud. Yes. Go for it, Frater. All right. Oh. Now they're big, so it takes a long time to get it going. Alright guys, so now we're at the top of our bell tower, and you can see we have four bells up here. So we've got this big one right here, this is Assumpta, named after Our Lady of the Assumption, which is the patron of our church. Right here you've got your patron, St. John the Baptist, Baptista, and then our other ones are Michael, Philomena, um, Gertrudis, and then even the one over there in the burial chapel. Um, these were built in France, so they were cast in a forge, and bells throughout the history of the Catholic Church have been considered sacramentals, like your rosary, like your scapulars, and when, when you hear a bell ring, um, we've always believed that it's casting the demons away and then it's bringing grace to you, um, and so you heard the bells earlier, but we probably want to show you one more time inside the bell, so if you come in here with me right now. Hear what it sounds like from the inside. All right, so that's our bell tower, and now we want to show you our view. Take a look. Now that our bells have called us to prayer, let's go pray in the church. So now we're gonna walk through our cloister garden on the way to the church, but we have to be quiet in here.
Takeda, welcome to the church, guys. Check it out. Pretty awesome, huh? Massive. Um, in our church, we use physical things to represent spiritual realities. So, the first thing you can notice when you walk into this church is that you don't just want to look down at your feet or look down at the ground. Your eyes immediately get drawn upwards. You can see our 70-foot vaulted ceilings, huge, massive ceilings. And that's representing um, that when we enter church, our minds and our hearts should be lifted up on high so that we should be thinking of spiritual things and not just everyday things. So that means like when you enter church, you shouldn't just be thinking about your homework or um, that you want to play Kahoot or Prodigy, um, but you should be thinking about um, what's going on in the Mass that Jesus is actually offering himself. Um, you should be thinking about God, you should be thinking about the saints and actually praying. So that's the first thing that you can see here. The second thing is that take a look at our stained glass windows. Beautiful stained glass windows on both sides. And then if you come, if you look up here at the back of the church, there's what's called a rose window. Extremely beautiful stained glass window. So um, what the stained glass windows can represent, you can see that each of the stained glass windows are beautiful, but they're all completely different from each other. So that represents the saints. The saints shine with beauty, but they're all their own personality. They're all totally different people. And the light of Christ, represented by the light of the sun, shines through them all. So the next thing you can see are all these columns, all these pillars um, in the church. You can see they're all lit up by different colors right now. It's super beautiful. Um, and just like pillars or columns hold up a church, hold up the roof, hold up the building, um, in the same way that represents the apostles and other great saints of the church that hold up the church through their holiness. So some more symbolism to um, explain our church. You can see right in front of me here, this part that has all the pews. So that part of our church is called the nave. And the nave comes from a Latin word meaning boat or ship. And so this represents the church in the world. The church as a ship that is going through a choppy waves, through a crazy world, a crazy um, storm-tossed sea, but that everyone in the ship is aimed towards and trying to arrive at a, at a des destination, um, the destination being heaven. And the whole church itself um, is a symbol of a body, Christ's body specifically. Um, so the church teaches that all the members of the church are part of what's called the mystical body of Christ. And you can see the layout of the church is in the shape of a human body. You can see here, this main section here being the body and the legs. And then if you go up even further, you've got like the torso area. And you can see way back at the back, that rounded area looks like a human head. And to the left and the right of that, um, you've got uh, where the arms would be. So this whole church represents the mystical body of Christ. Um, the lay faithful being here in the body, the priests and um, those whose main job is to praise God um, in the heart. And then the altar where Jesus sacrifices himself in every single mass at the head, Jesus being the head of the body. So I said before that this section of the church that has all the pews in it um, represents the whole church um, as a boat, but it also represents earth. And this section here called the sanctuary, um, meaning the holy place, represents heaven. And these two points, these two parts meet at this section right here. So um, in a little while, we'll have what's called a communion rail. So it'll be a rail about this high and it'll separate this earth section and this heaven section. But these two sections will meet when you come and you kneel down here for Holy Communion and the priest crosses the barrier from uh, heaven 
and gives you Jesus in Holy Communion. So heaven comes down to you. So I told you that this part of the church represents heaven, um, and just like this represents heaven, so us Norbertines um, are supposed to represent um, the angels in heaven. So the angels in heaven, their main job is to praise God. Um, and so we copy them by seven times a day coming into this part of the church and praising God through the Psalms. And we we're supposed to represent um, angels and the life of the saints in heaven in other ways too, um, through taking the vows. So we're, we're basically, when we join the monastery, we're basically trying to live as close as we could to what life in heaven is going to be like. So for instance, um, in heaven, no one will be married, so we don't get married. Um, in heaven, no one will own any physical possessions anymore, so we don't own any physical possessions. And in heaven, you don't do what you want to do, you don't do your own will, you do what God wants you to do, you do God's will. And so we take a vow um, so that we have to listen to our um, superiors. So I want to now show you what it would be like um, for us to sing what's called the Liturgy of the Hours um, or the Divine Office. So me and Frederick Garion are gonna sit in these choir stalls, these are called choir stalls, and we're gonna go back and forth so you can see what it would be like. Yeah. 